Trade wind sailing is one of the best parts of sailing Florence around the world. Hundreds of miles out to sea, getting away from the hustle and bustle of modern life, sailing in glorious conditions day after day. Blue skies with puffy white clouds and a steady wind pushing us westward around the world. But what does that mean for us on Florence? And how do we set the boat up to make the most of these conditions? This is what we'll share with you in this short bonus video. We are Matt and Amy, and we've been sailing our 37-foot yacht Florence around the world for over five years now, and we have crossed three oceans by using the trade winds. This is how we sail Florence to make the most of trade wind sailing. A trade wind is a wind blowing steadily towards the equator from the northeast in the northern hemisphere or the southeast in the southern hemisphere, especially at sea. Two belts of trade winds encircle the Earth, separated by an area of unstable winds on the equator called the doldrums. Trade winds are generated by a combination of the hot sun at the equator, heating the air and the Coriolis effect of the Earth's rotation. We're currently hundreds of miles out to sea, crossing the Indian Ocean, sailing in the southeast trade winds. We've been sailing downwind with the trade winds for about five days now. And the trade winds are fantastic because they bring stable winds, which means that we don't have to adjust the sails as often. And we actually have a standard sail setup that we use in these conditions. So we thought we'd run you through that and show you how we set the boat up. Because we're running downwind, we have the mainsail quite a long way out, but we can't actually put it all the way out on Florence because if we did that, then the sail itself would touch the lowers of the spreaders and it would chafe especially when we're at sea for as long as we are, which is three weeks this time. This is the lower shroud that Amy's referring to that means we can't let the mainsail out all the way. And you can see that actually we have had it up against it a little bit in some of the manoeuvres. We've already got a little bit of wear on the sail, but we've already got this bit of protective webbing on the sail so that it just wears through that, it's sacrificial. And then we've got the spreaders further up, which is the other reason we can't let the mainsail all the way out. So we tend to let it out as far as we can and then just pull it back in enough that we can see that it's not touching and not chafing on the spreaders. And then we set a preventer here on the main. And what this does is it pulls the boom out and it also pulls down on the sail. So it doesn't create an ideal sh sail shape, but what it does stop is the sail slamming back and forth. And especially because we've got a fully battened main, and that's quite a problem when we're running downwind in, in big waves. Pulling down on the boom in this way reduces how much the battens bang back and forth in the waves. We tend to sail with at least one reef in the mainsail, which also reduces the battens banging and flattens the sail to reduce its chance of chafing on the rigging. Leaving an extra reef in the mainsail also means that we don't have to turn up into the wind as often to change it. We just let the roller furling genoa in and out to match the wind strength, which is easy for one person to do from the cockpit. So moving forward to the Genoa, this is a Genoa sheet here that controls the sail and we've got this Genoa car which we can move forward and back on this track and because we're, we're broad reaching at the moment we need to control the back edge of the Genoa. We move this car quite a long way further forward on the track than we would have it if we were going upwind. We have to take the tension off the sheet and then we can pull this pin and we can slide this car forward and aft on the track. That just gets the right shape into the Genoa. So we're a bit far off the wind and in quite wavy conditions to get the perfect shape for the Genoa. So we've actually got it slightly oversheated, why all the telltales aren't flying perfectly. But by moving that car along the Genoa track, we affect the angle that this rope pulls on the sail. And if we move it further forward, it pulls more down and closes the back edge of the sail. So we can control that. And if we move it further backward, then it pulls further along and pulls on the bottom edge of the sail and that will open up the top edge of the sail and we're trying to get an even point in between so that we've got the top and the bottom of the Genoa pulling equally with the wind we haven't got the top flapping and the bottom over sheeted. The trade winds that we've had over the last week have only varied by about 60 degrees 
but when the wind turns so that it's coming more from behind us what happens is the mainsail here blankets the genoa and stops the wind from getting it so the genoa will just start flapping so what we do in that that situation is we move the genoa out onto this pole and we've actually had this pole set up for about a week and not moved it in order to set the pole here it takes both of us to come out of the cockpit where it's safe onto the foredeck but once it's set and it's stable here we just leave it up and then whenever the wind turns so that it's coming more behind us whoever is on watch at that time can stay it safely inside the cockpit and just use the sail controls that are in the cockpit to move the genoa from where it is now to pulled out keep the pole securely in one place we use three ropes so we've got the tack line which runs from the pole to the to the bow of the boat we have the guy which runs from the pole to the back of the boat and we have the pole up which runs from the top of the pole up to about halfway up the mass the genoa sheet is left permanently led through the jaws of the pole so the genoa can be reefed or swapped over to the other side easily so that just leaves the stay sail um, which we haven't got up at the moment so when we're reaching like this, broad reaching, if we put this stay sail up, it would stop the wind getting to the genoa, so it wouldn't actually help us out very much. But when we've got the genoa out on the pole, we set this and sheet it in tight. And that act, just acts as the board, which really stops the boat rolling so much, because as we roll, the wind will just push on it and it's, it dampens out that roll. But where this is really coming, and this is a new toy for us, we haven't had this for very long, where this is really coming useful has been when we're somewhere in between the broad reach and dead run. So we've got the wind, it's, it's too far off to have the genoa there. So we've got the genoa out in the pole, but we've got wind coming through this gap between the genoa and the mainsail. And then we can put this stay sail up in that gap and it's given us an extra half knot speed. Uh, so we'll show you that when we actually put it up. This stay sail is actually more of an upwind sail. Whoa! <laughs> so that's, that's the boat's just borne away a bit down a wave and the, the wind that was going into the genoa has been hidden behind the mainsail and suddenly the genoa flaps. That's what we're talking about when we change angle. At that point, if we were constantly sailing at that angle we just went down to, we'd have to move the genoa out to the pole. But as I say, this, this stay sail is more of an upwind sail. It's a, more of a blade sail. It's for use when it's too windy for the big genoa because it's a lot smaller. But I'm really excited to find all the other ways we can use this stay sail as well. And it's, it's proving to be a really versatile, useful sail. So stay sail is actually hanged on onto this stay. Instead of being on a furler like the genoa, it would be much easier to use if it was on a furler, but we don't have a furler on this one. Uh, so we have to come up onto the foredeck to uh, put it up and we just take off this clip. One of us stands at the mast and hoists it and the other one feeds it up. And then getting it down, we just got to come up here and pull it down. But it's not too bad because it's, it's not right on the bow so you can get right round it and, and grab it. In summary, we lock the mainsail into position as much as possible so that it doesn't chafe. We permanently mount the pole so that we can swap the genoa on and off it and easily reef the genoa from the cockpit. We keep an extra reef in the mainsail to flatten it and reduce how often we need to head up into the wind to reef it further. We use the staysail sheeted in hard to reduce how much Florence rolls in the waves. Next week we'll be back to a full length episode, sharing 24 hours in our life and our watch routine at sea. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click the bell to get a notification when the next video is released. And let us know what you think of the video. We love reading all your comments. We would like to thank everyone who supports us, and especially our star patrons.